Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, The Truth About God. My name is Erica Brown, and if you're new to my channel, what's up? I'm so happy to have you, and if you've been with me a while, welcome back. And if you're listening to the podcast or you're enjoying the blog, um, I'm happy for that, <laughs> uh, and I'm happy to have you as well. So, today I, I want to talk to you guys about disappointment and how to process and manage disappointment when that disappointment is aimed towards God, okay? So today, ultimately, we're talking about projecting your disappointment on God, right? So let me give you the first, the only scripture reference I have actually is 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Let me read that to you. Um, let me read that to you again. It's 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So, in this scripture, in Peter, when, when it's saying, humble yourselves, you're saying, I can't do this by myself. I need your help. I don't understand this. I don't, I can't figure this out on my own. Humbling yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, at the right time, he will exalt you, casting all your anxieties, so all your all your anxieties, just as it says, it's very plain. All your worries, your fears, your doubts, your disappointments, you can cast all that on him because he cares for you. That's the thing that we have to remember when we're disappointed, especially when we're feeling disappointment towards God. Because in that moment, we can feel like, oh, you don't care what happens to me. You could have fixed this and you didn't fix it. You could have changed this and you didn't change it. So we have to remember that he cares for us when we experience those moments those seasons in our relationship with God because we're in a relationship with him it's not religion it's it's love and when you're in a relationship with someone that you love and they love you you experience disappointment no matter how great that love is and in these moments we have to remember he cares for you he cares for us he cares for you he cares for me right so I know God is all powerful I know God is all-powerful. You may have come to the point in your faith as well that you know God is all-powerful and nothing is too hard for him. Nothing. And this has been a source of great comfort for me as well as great despair simultaneously, right? And I'll break this down. I'll explain this more. When I feel disappointed in me, when I just feel disappointed in myself, thank you, Jesus, the things that I wish I was better at, the things I can't do, the things that aren't changing the way that I hope they would change. And God knows the meat of that. He knows the root of that, the depth of that, the heart and the mind behind that hurt and that disappointment. He understands the, the meat of it. I get so frustrated and hurt because I know he could change it. No problem. Like, it's not a big deal for him. He could change this instantly. It's not a problem. And when he doesn't, I have gotten and sometimes still get frustrated with him because I know he can, but he won't. And that's where it comes into. I know that you're all powerful. I know that you can do anything. I know no purpose of yours can be thwarted. And this just feels like it's a good thing. And I'm struggling with this or not maybe not even within myself, but also with other people, and you haven't changed it yet. And I know you can. I know you can. So then the question comes in as to why haven't you, right? Why haven't you done the thing that would ease me and soothe me, or that I feel like would ease me and soothe me and make my life a little easier, or make me, yeah, pretty much just my life a little easier, right? And like I said, I get frustrated with him because I know he can, but he won't. The truth of it is, this is the truth. I've put on God, I put it on God to do something for me or make me a certain way that he never promised me. 
He never promised it. He never promised that he would make me quote unquote perfect. He never promised that he would take um, all my pain away on earth, right? He never promised that I wouldn't have struggles here or things that I would have to live with or deal with. So my disappointment is misplaced because I just assumed that he would. I just assumed. And how many of us have been in that space in our relationship with God and our relationship with Christ where we know you can do all things. I know this is not a big deal for you. You raised Lazarus from the dead. He was dead. He walked out of that tomb because you called him out. And I'm here asking this of you, right? Whatever this is, but I'm still here. And that's a disappointment attached to that, especially when you're knowing that you're dealing with an all-powerful, all-knowing, sovereign God. But he maybe didn't make you that promise. Maybe he didn't promise you that everything would be okay on earth or that all your troubles would disappear. But maybe it's enough that he just promised that he strengthened you and be with you in it. Sometimes our disappointment in, in God and with God is misplaced because we're expecting from him, for him to do things that he never promised that he would do at the outset, right? So where have you heard the voice of the Lord and mistook what he said, right, for your own personal ideals. He said one thing, but you internalized it a different way and then got disappointed when it didn't work out the way you assumed that it would. And that's a word even for me as I'm ministering this unto you. God just reminded me of something that I've been expecting, right? I'm kind of expecting for this thing to happened the, this one way. I set it up in my mind. I, God told me one thing, right? And I believe him. I know that it's true, but I've expected that the revelation of that is going to occur in a way that he didn't promise, honestly, that he did not promise. He didn't attach anything to it except he'd be with me. He blessed me. He strengthened me. He'd be with me in it. That it's my responsibility to do. Thank you, Jesus. And even now, does my flesh love that? Absolutely not. Because my expectation is here. And God has given me another expectation. And it's not lower. It's just different than the one that I have for the situation that I brought to him. Right? We have to remember that he, we serve at his leisure. He doesn't serve at ours, right? We serve him. He doesn't serve us. He's our sovereign. He's our savior. We're his servants, you know? And that means that sometimes things don't happen the way that we think that they should. And I'm not necessarily talking about a storm or a struggle or some other issue in life. I'm talking about Jesus. I expect it to be one way and I'm not that way. I expected to have this one thing in a particular way and you're not necessarily giving it to me in that way. And that with that comes a disappointment or grief that you have to also bring to God. You can cast that anxiety onto him because he does care for you. We have to ask him to help us to be content with his will and plan for our lives. And that's a mighty word. That's a mighty word, and I hope that y'all received that and heard it because I need it for myself. We have to ask him to help us to be content with his will for our lives. If it don't look like TikTok, it don't look like Instagram, it don't look like Facebook, it don't look like a reality TV show where everybody is beautiful and skinny and have all the right stuff together and everything is just what we think is perfect, what our ideals are. His ideals are different, and we have to surrender to that. Thank you, Jesus. I was going to use another word, um, acquiesce or succumb to it, but that's not who God is. We have to surrender to him because in that surrender, he's going to give us something better. Revelation that his will is greater than anything we could have hoped for anyway. And revelation is a gift. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation is a gift and it's nothing that we can take for granted. All right. So when God doesn't live up to our ideas or plans, we have to trust his. That's just it. That's just it. Ask him. And like this, the scripture says, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. You can talk to him about this stuff. You don't have to just let it fester and kind of rot your heart. 
and make you distrustful of God because he disappointed you in this one area of your life because he didn't live up to what you thought your your ideals or standards were for your life right? You have to surrender and acquiesce to what his are. And that is not easy. I'm telling you right now, because even as I'm ministering this to you, the Holy Spirit is ministering some truths to me that is difficult for my flesh to receive. But in my spirit, I say yes. And I need his help to say yes for it every day. I still surrender to his will. I still want what he wants for me. I just need help in this season to surrender to it, right? I just need you to help me along, Lord Jesus, because it's hard for me. And we can ask for that help. So if you're struggling with that today, that your plans don't look like his plans, and it's turning out that his plans is going to win out over your plans, which is what you want anyway, right? And it's hard to kind of die to what you hope for. And you're dealing with some disappointment. You can ask God to help you process your disappointment, child. It's okay to ask for help with that. He truly does care for you. He truly does care for you, even though you may not get your own way, okay? Even though you don't get your way, he still loves you. Um, I had the Lord telling me to pray for you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, bless us to repent of our sins. Bless us to be repentant, Father God, of not trusting you, not believing you, not honoring you, not worshiping you when we're disappointed, when we're dealing with despair, in the mighty name of Jesus. But thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your mercy and your gentleness, your kindness, your peace and your love. Thank you, Jesus. When we find ourselves in this state, Father God, your grace and your mercy surround us. Your love lifts us up. It helps us to see where you are and where we are and what part we play in this kingdom and in life as a whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us to remember that this life is not about us. In the mighty name of Jesus' name, we serve you, we worship you, we honor you. You're our sovereign, you're our Lord, you're our God, you're our King, you're our Master. And everything that you have for us, your will and that you declare for us is perfect, no matter what we see or how it feels. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your precious Son, Jesus' name, I pray and ask it all, Father God, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Thank you, Jesus. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you, Jesus. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all, Father God. Amen. Y'all, this is not easy. Word. This is not anything you can do on your own. This is a death to your own will, your own desires, and your own plan. And it's coming to life in Christ. And we all come to this point. We all come to this place in faith if we're continually seeking after God and his will and his way for our lives. And it's okay to feel the disappointment, but it's not okay to hold on to it. We have to give that to Christ even as we're striving, seeking after him. Not striving, but seeking after him, okay? In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all. Amen. Y'all. I pray this message blessed you, helped you, and encouraged you. And if it did, please like, subscribe, and comment below. And I'll see you guys next time. And I'll post the last video up here somewhere. And uh, y'all have a great rest of your week. Bye.